Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crime and Entertainment. Now, we have here a very special guest. Everybody that knows me knows I have two favorite TV shows of all time. That's Sopranos and Sons of Anarchy. I've interviewed quite a few people from the Sopranos, but none from Sons. This is my first. Oh, Please wow. welcome to the show, Kristen Renton. Kristen, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm good. How are you doing? I can't complain. Listen, I am super excited you could come on the show because we got a lot to talk about here. Obviously, your your time on Sons. We're going to get into a little bit of everything, even maybe a ghost story or two, because I've seen you on Celebrity Ghost Stories one night. And yeah. I don't know if it's just the way those guys shot that show or if it's just the, you know, the background noise, the effects. But obviously, the story, too, man, it had my skin crawling. So, we're going to get into all that here today's episode, but let's just start out from the beginning. Kind of tell our audience a little bit about, you know, Kristen coming up, you know, where did you come up? What part of the States? And then what kind of got you into this acting gig here? Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, my dad was in the air force, so we moved around a lot when I was growing up, uh, ended up in Florida and, uh, my older sister was a model when, uh, when I was younger. And so I, I kind of wanted to follow in her footsteps a little bit, gotten a little bit of that, but it was just local, you know, at the, at the mall or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I started doing improv classes and kind of fell in love with it. Um, and through that, uh, the, the guy who ran the school, he, he knew an agent from LA and I was about 16 at the time, I think. And um, he said, hey, I want you to meet this agent. He's doing a, a basically like what we call a cattle call, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an open call. And uh, he's like, hey, will you come? And I was like, okay, sure, why not? You know, we'll see what it's all about. And um, out of 350 kids that showed up, I was one of three that he actually asked to come to LA and that, you know, he would, he would put with his agency and everything. And, and um, you know, I have amazing parents and they were like, it's entirely up to you, but we'll support you if you want to do it. You know, we don't want you to look back on this and say, what if? And I had never even thought about being an actor. That was not something I wanted to be a marine biologist. Like I didn't, I hadn't even thought about acting. And, um, but I said, you know what, let's give it a shot. And uh, I went to California, fell in love with it. Uh, booked a commercial, a nationwide insurance commercial, actually within a few months of me moving out there and uh, kind of just stuck with it ever since. So, yeah. Well, that's definitely, I mean, you know, it's, it's funny how you go out there for one thing and then it kind of parlays into something else in your career. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I had no expectations and it, everything just kind of, it was just a blessing. It's just been a wild ride. I believe it. Now you're also like a huge animal activist. Mm hmm Kind of tell us how that came about because I mean, I'm a dog lover myself. Uh, I have a Husky. And oh, nice. yeah, he's the coolest dog, man. They shed a lot. That's like the only <laughs> downside. I have to vacuum like 14 times a day to keep yep. the pet hair under control. Yep. But other than that, he is like the best dog you can ask for. What oh, kind of oh. sparked your love for, you know, the animals there? I honestly don't know because I don't remember a time where I wasn't madly in love with animals. Right. Um, my, my family, we've always had um pets i i think i think it really started um intensely when the the first cat i ever adopted um she was a stray and she um she actually came to me i was waiting for the bus when i was in elementary school we were in um, louisville kentucky at the time and uh she found me and you know we tried to find her owners and nobody came forward so uh we adopted her and um, she was a really beautiful calico. I absolutely loved her, but she was indoor outdoor. And one day we got a phone call that she got hit by a car and a, a jogger found her on the side of the road. And it absolutely crushed me. And, and realizing, <clears throat> you know, that she, nobody cared enough to even call, you know, call us or let us know that they just hit my cat and killed it. Um, that really crushed me. And then when we, uh, when my parents agreed to let me adopt another one, we went to the pound and seeing that, and, and all those animals who needed a home and kind of realizing what happens if they don't get a home, you know, at such a young age, that really, that really hit me hard, I think. Yeah. So ever since then, it's just, I've wanted to be a voice for those that don't have one. 
No, I got you. Makes perfect sense. I got. I'm not the biggest cat person. I, I'm a huge movie guy. You know, I watch a ton of movies. I'm a big horror movie fan. Yeah. And ever since I watched Pet Cemetery from back in the day, I just I kind of keep my distance from the cats. You know, Cujo was fine. I just didn't necessarily <laughs> hang around Saint Bernards. But oh, that's funny. The cat oh, was just like goodness. the generic cat. It just they always kind of just gave me the creeps there. So I'm I'm a dog guy, 100. percent I love dogs, but cats I kind of keep my distance a little bit. Oh, cats can be bitchy. Oh yeah, they can be bitchy. But I I love them. I have one right now who thinks she's a dog, and she'll follow you around the house, and she'll she's played fetch with me before. She's just the coolest thing. Super mellow, and and she just gets along. We have um an American bulldog pit bull kind of yeah. mix and um, a great Dane Rottweiler mix. And she just, she's totally chill with them. They, you know, they don't mind her. And it's, it's just funny to watch our, our, uh, our big dog Dax. Uh, he just chases around after her cause he wants to play with her. And she's just like, Oh, I'm so annoyed by you. It's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. And it, when they can get along like that, I bet it's funny to watch. <laughs> it is. It is. It really is. It's cute. She now, begs like a dog. We're eating and she'll come up with the boys and just sit there and beg. It's she thinks she's a dog. It's hilarious. So you're and correct me if I'm wrong here, but was your first acting gig? It was the that MTV show Sausage Factory, was it not? Or am I wrong? It, on that? it was, yeah. That was my first series. Yeah. That's going back in the day. Like I vaguely remember that, but I that's going back. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. No, that one was fun. We had a. Uh, Adam Brody, who went on to go uh, do my stuff in the OC. Yeah. Um, Johnny Lewis, who was actually on Sons the first mm -hmm. two seasons. He was on it. Um, and, a, and a couple of the really great actors, one of whom uh, now is on the other side and writes for a couple of shows. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, it was it was so much fun. We shot it in Vancouver. And man, it was like going away to college for a little while. Oh, I bet it was. <laughs> yeah. All the MTV part. shows back in those days looked look real fun to be on. If you could land oh, on yeah. them, it's like getting paid to, to, you know, do things that probably comes very natural to you in those days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very much so. Yep. Now, and well, you started in a, like one episode of the OC too, didn't you? I did. I yeah. did. I was uh, what everybody called a hooker with a heart of gold. <laughs> a hooker with a heart of gold on the OC? Okay, so I'm starting episode. to send some typecasting here in these roles. Here. What's going on? Right? What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, and, and what's funny is I always knew your name on there as Ima, but I never <laughs> knew the last name until recently. Yeah. Who comes up with that name? Oh, that was all Kurt Sutter. That was all Kurt. That okay. was all his genius right, right there. So before we jump into that, let's, let's backtrack just a second. How did the son's role come up? You know, how did you hear about it? Who did you have to go interview with? Kind of tell us the lay of the land before you got hooked up with the sons of anarchy gig. So it was actually, it was an audition, just like any other job I would audition for. And, um, I went in that morning and I, I read for casting and, and they put it on tape and I ended up getting a call back the same day. Um, they were doing it pretty quick. Um, because initially it was it was a one episode shot with a possibility of recurring. So, um, you know, and that happens a lot when they're not quite sure where the storylines are going to go. Right. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I ended up going to the uh, callback and actually Kurt was in the room and the director, Stephen Kay, was in the room and one of the producers. And uh, I read and it took what felt like forever to get the news. Sometimes it can be really quick and sometimes it can be, you know, a week or so. And couple days go by and you know then I I tend to just move on and think you know okay well it didn't go my way and that's fine you know on to the next but this one I think it was about four or five days later I had to go to my manager's office and um we got the news while I was there so that was pretty that was pretty cool wow so did you read did you know it was for like you know somebody in the porn business like the, the role yeah I did <laughs> I did and uh, I thought you know it was going to be it was going to be a lot of fun because I mean I I knew the premise of the show. I had actually not seen the show, but prior to auditioning, um, I did go and uh, I think I looked it up on YouTube or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly how I did it, but I did a little bit of research and I was like, okay, this show looks awesome. This show looks amazing. And then once I got the gig, I, uh, I went back and watched the first season. And yeah. yeah, I was a big fan of Kurt when he was writing for mm -hmm. the shield. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. which he had a, I think he had a one or two episodes in the shield also where he played that yeah. drug dealer. 
that they killed. And obviously, if anybody's followed both shows, they know a lot of people kind of crossed over and, and came uh-huh. into the Sons uh-huh. of Anarchy uh, quite a, a bit, actually, a lot. Yeah. Uh, even up until the last one when uh, Vic Mackey come over and was driving yep. an 18-wheeler. Yep. So I was already a fan of Kurt, and it's a, it's a real funny story. I'll throw this in there. My wife was pregnant at the time, who you just met here before we got <laughs> <home>. <laughs> And yeah. we're trying to figure out names and we did figure out if we were going to have a boy. So I'm looking through this entertainment weekly magazine and I see Kurt Sutter's sons of anarchy coming out and I'm like, Oh, well, this will be good. So we mm-hmm. start watching that, you know, right after we find out what we're having and like immediately matter of fact, I don't even know if we knew what we were having at that time. Immediately. Once we started watching it, we agreed that if it was a boy, it was going to be Jackson. If it was a girl, we were going to name it Gemma. And it is a boy, and his name is Jax. That's yep. I I cannot tell you. It's it's so cool to to be a part of something that had such a profound effect on people. Because you know, I'll go do you know an appearance at a comic con or something, and I cannot tell you how many people come up and say, "This is my son Jax," or "This is my daughter Gemma," or you know something along those lines. And it's it's so cool to to have that kind of connection, have that have that experience. It's just, it's so neat. How old is your son now? He is 13. Oh my God. Wow. It really has been that long. Hasn't it? It has. Yeah. Cause I mean, he wasn't born when the first show was on. I don't think he was born either. It was in after the first, it went off or maybe the second, I want to say mm-hmm. the second season was airing when he was born. Cause he was born in March. So yeah. Wow. 13, so yeah, we, we had totally yeah, agreed. We couldn't, we couldn't agree on names for nothing. And once I was like, all right, I was like, I got it. I said, if it's a boy, we're going to go with Jax. If it's a girl, we'll go with Jim. And she's like, all right, I can work with that. So it wound up being a boy and I was happy and I got my Jax. <laughs> there you go. Nice. That's awesome. Now working on that show, man, you had some great, I mean, some of these guys had, you know, been around for a while. Kim Coates is obviously a very accomplished actor. Uh-huh. Um, Mark Boone Jr. had done a lot. I didn't even recognize Opie from being, well, um, uh, Ryan Hurst from being in, um, what was it? Uh, remember the Titans mm-hmm, didn't mm-hmm. even look like the same dude. And, I know a lot of people had that reaction. Yeah. Somebody put up a meme the other day and it had, uh, Ryan Hurst and a uh, noble wood. They were both football players on there. And then Noble actually went on to star in the wire, which was a real big hit show on HBO. Yep, and yep. you know, Ryan, it was like, who knew that we would go on to run drugs in Baltimore and, you know, Bertier would go on to, you know, run with Jackson on the yeah. anarchy. But what was yeah. it like working on the set with all those guys? I mean, it just seems like that set could have probably been a real fun time as well. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, walking in in the second season, everybody already kind of had, um, they were already like a family, right? So it's always a little awkward when you're the new person coming in. It's like, you know, your first day of school, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, they they could not have been more welcoming. They could not have been nicer. Um, you know, very respectful, very welcoming. Um, I mean, it was like, I just gained a bunch of big brothers and, and it was amazing. And, you know, I still talk to them all. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it is a family and, you know, having gone through such a, a show that made such an impact and, you know, was so huge, um, you know, we're all bonded by that. So it's, did I just lose a light? It just happened. Oh, that's awesome. just went out. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, it was, it was, it was awesome. And they, I mean, you talk about a funny group of guys. I had no idea. Ron Perlman. Oh my God. That man has jokes <laughs> for days and they are definitely not, um, PG the part. Yeah. They're not PG <laughs> and it is hilarious just to walk up to you and just give you a zinger and you're like, what just happened? And then they're like, Action and you're like, oh, I'm not ready. Oh, I was about to say that's probably the key doing it right before you're supposed to go on, and you just kind of got to gather yourself and get it together. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was they are so much fun, and traveling with them is a who. It's just I, I love them all so dearly. Yeah, it it seemed like you know behind the scenes that would be a real fun time, and you kind of got to play. We we mentioned earlier, uh, you were playing the porn star. I'm a tight. Mm-hmm. last name i always find it get a kick out of people i'll just read through the names and i just get a <laughs> kick out of it i've, I've actually got an adult film star coming on later on this week and that's what we're going to do we're going to go over some of the names because some of these names are just hilarious and that one's oh. definitely fitting right in it's epic what, what what do they say it's your first street you lived on and what you ate for breakfast or something <laughs> yeah like the name of your first pet or something 
<laughs> so I've heard all kind of combinations, man, but I get a kick out of it because some of them are really witty and then some of them are just like, man. Mm-hmm. And when I heard tight was your last, I was like, oh, God, because all I knew it was I'm. I didn't even realize you, they gave you a last name. On well, the- I actually didn't know either until uh, I think it was the episode where uh, Gemma and Tara shoot up my car because it was my personalized license plates. Oh. That's how I figured it out. Yeah, initially oh. I didn't. I didn't know initially, but yeah. I didn't even think about that. You said that. Wow, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, and you kind of get. And that's what I was going to talk about. You kind of get to play the bad girl, the villain. Now we've had a few wrestlers on the show, and every wrestler I talked to said they love playing a heel more than anything because it, you, it's their job to make people hate you, and they love it. Yeah. Oh, Was it's that, so much more fun. It's yeah. so much more fun. Absolutely. I mean, and some of the lines Kurt gave me were just, oh, they were perfection. It's just so much more fun being the bad girl. <laughs> yeah, well, you look like you enjoyed it. I bro- actually broke out my uh I saw that. Before. Yeah, I love it. The <laughs> um, so what was it like? Like you obviously you had some intense scenes with not only Jax but Opie, like the top two male guys on the show. Mm-hmm. What, what was that like? Oh, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. horrible. I hated every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> because after after Opie, well, you got slapped after Opie, right? Didn't Well, yeah, things you, went you well, no. Things went downhill quickly. They escalated quickly after Opie. Yeah. Um I got I got beat up by Jax, which Yeah, that was what I was trying to get to. That yeah. is like a brutal beating, man. Well, you know, funny story. <laughs> Uh, we were, uh, there's a stunt double that comes in and she does a lot of the, the bigger picture stuff. And then, you know, as we get close up, I do all the, the close up stuff. Um, and, uh, Charlie and I were talking, it was in between takes and it was, it was right before he grabs my, my hair and, you know, slams me down on the desk and we were talking and, and we didn't back up far enough. And so when he did that, I actually hit the desk and it was like a solid oak like oh. solid and you heard my head hit and every, you could have heard a pin drop in the studio. I mean, everybody just gasped. And of course I, I fall down and then I pop up like a weeble wobble and I'm like, I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. And the look on the director's face and, the, and Charlie's face, I mean, he looked like, he looked like he was just going to drop from fright. Like he really thought that you know, he had killed me or something. <laughs> um, and immediately the medic came over and was like, you have to go to the hospital right now. Like you are going to be concussed there, you know, like, how are you feeling? You know, asking me all these questions. <clears throat> and I refused to go to the hospital. I said, I am not going to go to the hospital right now. If we haven't gotten this take, cause I am not coming back and going through hair and makeup again and putting on this outfit again. <laughs> I was like, we are gonna, we are gonna finish it. I'm here. Let's do it. I can rally. And then I, then I will let you take me to the hospital. And so we did, we, uh, I think did one or two more takes and then off I went. Wow. Yeah. So was that probably like, you know, obviously the role you had was more fun. It wasn't necessarily a whole lot of, you know, extra onto a lot of your stuff, except for that scene when he had to beat you up. What was like one of the most challenging scenes to film in your time on that show? Was it, would it be that one probably, or? I don't, I wouldn't say that that was challenging. I think, you know, that's a really good question. I haven't really thought about it. That, that scene to me was, uh, <clears throat> it was far more challenging for Charlie. He, right. he did not want, he didn't want to do it in the first place because he, he doesn't believe in, you know, um, uh, abuse of women. And so then we kind of had a whole conversation about that. And then he was really, really against spitting on me. And I actually pulled him aside and I was like, look, I said, I get where you're coming from and I love you for it. And, you know, I think in any other circumstance, I'd be right on board with you. But I was like, truth be told, I kind of deserve it. And I was like, it's going to make this scene so epic. And we had a whole conversation about it. And, you know, he, uh, you know, he ended up doing it. And I mean, it's so perfect. Yeah. The scene ended up being so perfect. Well, I, I remember it. watching that, like when it, you know, cause you don't know right off the bat what he's going to do. He's coming yeah. like, he's trying to like, he's upset that you went with Opie, you know, and you, you kind of yeah. crossed him off the list and I'm sitting there with my wife and I'm like, Oh boy, he's going back there. She's like that asshole. And, you know, I, I can't believe he's doing that. And then when he, he starts beating us, she's like, good, good. And I'm just like, good. <laughs> oh, I know. So many people were like, you deserved it. We're so glad he did it. And I was like, I'm not going to disagree. I mean, 
And that's that's the beauty of shows like Sopranos and, and Sons of Anarchy, where in essence the audience is like cheering and in love with people that really do bad shit. Like they mm-hmm. kill people and they beat people up and yep. and you just love them to death. I mean that's yep. the that's the brilliance of the writing by guys like Kurt Sutter to to you know, basically you're loving the villain. You know, you, yeah. you don't have any you don't have any feelings for the people that they're beating up or extorting or robbing yeah. or ripping off. You're cheering them on. Yep. I mean, a lot of people died in this show. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And nobody seemed to care. <laughs> yeah. Not a bit. So how many seasons were you in total? Um, I was two through six. My last episode was in season six. My first one was in season two. So, yeah. So you didn't have, you were just an appearance on that one. You didn't have like a send off for that. And it didn't kill you often. No, I just kind of just, yep. That was it. Uh, Gemma bashed my face in and then, uh, I went off to porn star heaven, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> what was, uh, I think that was a, a big shocker for people too, because Katie Seagal obviously known for, for Peg Bundy. Um, you done a, done yeah. a ton of stuff, but you know, Peg Bundy, Al Bundy, that's just synonymous in TV history. And uh-huh. when somebody uh-huh. plays a role so well, that's just kind of how you envision them. And then when she come into this role as Gemma, you know, the matriarch of the family, it was just like, holy yeah. hell. And she just embodied it. I mean, she rolled with it. I don't think couldn't have picked any person on this planet to play that better. Than oh, I know. Her, I don't think. She was so perfect. She was so perfect. And she, I mean, every scene was just so intricate with her and she just owned it. She just owned it. Yeah. So all together, if you had to pick a favorite, you know, time on the show, be it scene or anything before we come up, close out on the sun stuff, you got to tell me what would kind of be like your, your funnest moment or scene or what on the whole show. Funnest moment. Well, you know, I, I really, I really love the scene where, where Jack speeds me up. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think that's a really poignant scene. Um, I do love the one where I pull a gun on the whole club. That just took some balls. <laughs> that really did. Um, and then, you know, making everybody jealous by getting to sleep with the two main hunks on the show, you know, it's like, yeah. that's not bad either. So, yeah. you know, I had, I had a great time. <laughs> I bet you did. It sounded like you had a good time. And that's cool that you guys all still, uh, you know, hang out and stuff at the cons and all that. Cause like you said, doing that and the impact that it had on people, I think you kind of develop, uh, you know, a relationship and a friendship you know, with people that just is going to last. You can go a couple years and not see them, but as soon as you see them, it's kind of yeah. going to pick up like old times. Absolutely. I love them all dearly. Now I want to talk about the ghosts that we mentioned earlier. Okay. You had an episode, if anybody has not seen it on Celebrity Ghost Stories, that I, I recommend that show to anybody if you do like scary stuff because the way that show's done is, is really good too. I mean, it's just like if you're watching at nighttime, I don't even want to get up out the couch to turn the light on for crying out loud because of all the, <laughs> you know, the, the sound effects that they put along. I think the sound effects is like probably 40% of it. But oh, yeah. the stories are crazy. So tell our audience a little bit about your experience because that one kind of really had me freaked out. Well, it was actually, it, it was pretty amazing. And, and um, it was my first time to the Queen Mary, which is the ship, uh, the ocean liner that's docked in um, Long Beach, California. Yeah. And it was my first time going down there. And I, I love anything paranormal and mysterious and spooky. I just, I love all that stuff. Because yeah, that's had uh, a long history of being haunted, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's listed as one of the top, I don't know, 10 or 20 haunted yeah. places in America. So yeah, I knew that there was a reputation, but I didn't know any stories specifically or anything like that. And um, a friend of mine was staying on the Queen Mary. He had been a part of a film I had done years and years prior. Um, and he actually lived in uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina, and he was out to California visiting. So I was like, oh, perfect reason for me to go down and check out the Queen Mary. So a group of us from the movie, we went down and we had dinner and um, I was the only one that decided to stay on the ship for the night. And so my friend, his name is Gene, um, he and I decided we were gonna go wander around do a little amateur ghost hunting, you know, and whatnot. And um, needless to say, uh, I didn't expect to see anything really. I didn't, I didn't really have any expectations. Cause like I said, I hadn't done any research, so I didn't know 
Yeah, you didn't yeah. know where to go, what to look for, nothing like that. No, nothing like that. We we ended up breaking into the uh, the the pool that's uh, been closed forever. And we wandered around there, and then before somebody found us, we were able to sneak back out. So it was just we were being mischievous, you know. Um, and um, we went down this one hallway, and you know, we there was. I forget the room number. It's been so long now. I forget the room number, but there was a room that's supposed to be like the most haunted room on the ship. And he was trying to get in, but it was all locked. And so we're taking our phones and like trying to take pictures under the door with like, you know, that much room and whatnot um, and seeing if we could get anything. But uh, we ended up at the nursery um, and uh, that door was locked as well. And we were trying to get in. He had said something about, you know, oh, well, there was a fire in the nursery or something. I don't remember exactly what he said. And so of course I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to like look under the door and take pictures and stuff. And I stood up and I'm trying to kind of jimmy the door open. And Gene's, he's a, he's a larger guy. He's, you know, at least six feet, six one, you know, a little bit heavy set. And he tapped me on my shoulder and he looks at me and he goes, every hair on the back of my neck just stood up. And I, and I wasn't really paying attention to what he was saying. I was like, well, that's weird. You know, <laughs> I just <laughs> trying to get in the nursery. And, um, and uh, he, he tapped me again and, and I turned and I looked at him and he was white as a sheet and he goes, run. And he just takes off down this hallway. And I'm like, what the? And so I, I just start hauling ass after him. And we're just, I mean, to see him run as fast as he ran was a sight to see. And I turn around to like, look to see, was there something chasing us? What, like, I didn't know why he ran. And clear as day, like I'm looking at you, there was this tall, slender guy, angular features dressed in like literally like 19 teens 20s like suit he had a hat on um it was like a grayish blue and he's running after us and I was like holy what and so we got to the middle of the ship where the staircase is and we we run up to the next level which is like the um it was either the next level we went up to I don't remember exactly and it's so funny that certain details that are so important, like they are ingrained in my mind. And like, I don't even remember how many stairs I ran up after I saw him, but we, we got up to the main, um, the main deck where like check-in is. Yeah. And we're out of breath and we're like, holy shit, what just happened? And, um, and we go up to the desk and I was like, um, so yeah, uh, and I'm trying to like come up with the words because I know I'm going to sound crazy. I was like, there's this guy that just chased us down the hallway. And I was like explaining what he looked like. And the lady behind the desk, like this smirk, like a Cheshire smile just creeps across her face. She goes, oh, you met the man in the gray suit. And I was like, Scoozy? What? <laughs> and she's like, oh yeah, he's one of our resident ghosts. It, he's, she's like, people see him all the time. And I was like, Wanna. what? <laughs> And I just, I mean, I just described, you know, what I saw. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's him. It now, was crazy. The backstory was that, that he had a daughter or something that drowned in that pool. Was that the backstory of that? Or was that dramatization there a little bit on their part? Well, no, there, there was um, children that drowned in the pool. And that's why they had closed it off. From what I understand, his, what I believe happened to him uh, was that his his child had passed away in the nursery and he became so distraught. I believe he killed his wife and then himself. Oh, Jesus. I think that's the story. I honestly, you know, I, w I went back a couple more times and I'm one of those where like, I don't want to know specifics because I don't want it to affect the experience that I have. I don't want to kind of will my mind into seeing something. I want right. it to all be natural and organic and authentic. So you know, I honestly don't even, I think that was the story. Um, so, well, wait a minute here. Now you went back down there. Oh yeah. Well, actually what I did that night is I went back down and I apologized to him for trying to get into the nursery because I wanted to repeat, you know, I wanted him to understand. I, I didn't mean any harm. I was just a stupid kid, you know, doing stupid stuff in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, and uh, my ass would have went back down there after <laughs> something like that. I'm gonna just let him have it. <laughs> it was crazy. It was it was definitely um, I mean, I've seen stuff my whole life, but that was the first full body like I'm looking at you apparition I've ever seen. Right. Yeah, that's I mean, it's one thing to hear sounds or see mm -hmm. you know, floating orbs or something like that, but when you mm -hmm. see something in the, the shape of a whole person there, you're talking different kind of territory there. That's to, I can see why the hairs on his neck stood up. Uh-huh. He didn't actually see him, but I, I guess, you know, he obviously felt him and, and could feel 
something wasn't right. So, yeah, yeah, I think what was that that movie Six Sense when the kid goes uh-huh. when the hairs on your neck stand up? That's them hanging around. Like yep. now, and any any time I ever have something like that happen, I'm just yeah looking around like what the hell's going on? Yeah. Yep. Shot. But no, that was that was a funny story, man. That that show was really scary. Like, and I think what it what what is the difference is it's people that you know is you know celebrities, and it's not just you know, some guy around the corner telling a story that you don't know, you know, yeah. you're not apt to really believe it. But I mean, even the, there was a story about the, uh, the Chelsea hotel in New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was just with a, a friend of mine up there in New York and he's an actor. He's been in a lot of stuff. And he was saying that it was the hotel where, uh, the Sid and Nancy, uh, mm-hmm. what happened mm-hmm. when they killed Nancy. Mm-hmm. And he was like, dude, he was like, I was with them that night. I was with him in the room. He was like, we were doing some, you know, things. I'm not going to drop his name because he said that, but he was like, we we were doing some stuff, you know, not non-music related. And he was like, I was scared to death. Like they were going to come knock on my door after that happened. Oh my God. But yeah, there was apparently a lot of weird stuff. I was actually thinking about staying there, but I decided against it. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Well, I really want to stay in the, uh, the Stanley out in Colorado one time. That's kind of like my, my, my bucket list place to stay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've heard about that. I have, I don't know too much about it, but I have heard of it. Which is crazy because I live in Charleston, South Carolina. It's like real haunted too. There's all kind of haunted tours and, oh, and God, yeah. around here. So oh, yeah. I heard you. I'm in New Orleans, Orleans. So, you know, that home base. <laughs> Are you a Saints fan? Well, um, so yes, I, I, uh, this interviews up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, um, well, so, Hear me out. I grew up in Tampa, so I was a Bucks fan. Okay. When I moved here, you know, my my uh, boyfriend he went to LSU, and you know, huge Saints fan. And I was like, I, you know, it cool. I'll, I'll root for him. You know, no big deal. But I got to be honest, I am not a Tom Brady fan. And when he went to the Bucks, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> And you know, I'm I was almost the exact opposite. I wasn't a Tom fan when he was in New England because I'm a Panther fan, and he okay. got us a Super Bowl in in the '03. But when he went, it was like I've always been a big person for the underdog or like people Me that too. people that when they write them off. And I think his last year in New England, they really struggled. They didn't have a good playoff performance. I think he threw a pick to like seal the game. And then it was like he went to Tampa and everybody was like, ah, he's washed up. He's just trying to get one last payday. You know, he's not going to be able to do what he did in New England. And so at that point, I kind of went, I, I flipped the script and I hated that man for years. Yeah. And I just kind of totally flipped. And I was like, you know what? I hope he wins and just, you know, shoves it up everybody's, you know what? But, and he <laughs> did. Now he's won one. I don't want him to keep winning. I just want him to get that yeah. one. He don't have to keep winning. He can retire anytime. But I know. I, I actually, I was. I was happy when they said he was going to retire last year. I'm like, look, he's got, you know, a bunch of kids that he's got to focus on, you know, all this stuff. Like it's, it's time. And, you know, I, I, even though I'm not a fan, I was like, I don't want to see him pull Favre and come back for one more year. And then it just be such a crap, you know, crap yeah. year, like go out on top. I mean, literally you, he is literally at the top of his game, you know, like great time to go. Yeah, um, no, but, I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah, if I, know, I would have probably maybe went out after winning that Super Bowl in Tampa. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Right, that. There's, people get a little greedy. They're always like, "Well, just one more, just yeah, one well, more." Yeah, well, I can think. I think he knew that they had a good nucleus there with that team and yeah. you know, with everybody he had around him, and they still do. I mean, they were really close last year. I mean, the Rams, you know, mm-hmm. beat him by some gutsy play calling by Sean McVay in the playoffs last year. So. Yeah. You know, he's he still got a shot to, to do it again. I do think this year, I've said it a lot, I do think this year will be his last year, regardless of what happens. I don't see him playing another year, especially now. I think he's kind of been reported he's having some marital issues yeah. going on. So, you know, that can affect your uh, your play <laughs> on the field too. So Yeah, you, know, you bring we, any kind of drama from home onto the field, it's going to affect the way you play. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, Lately here, now you've got a few movies coming down the pipe that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Now the first one, is it T11 Incomplete? Yes. Okay, give me a little background on that because I checked out the trailer and I was like, okay, this is pretty interesting. And give us a little background on the movie and then what you had to do to get into the mindset of that role. 
Yeah, it's definitely a departure from all of my hookers and porn stars that I yeah. play. Well, you still um, got some girl on girl action there, but we'll get into it. Um, yeah, actually, it's a it's a really beautiful story. Um, it's a heartbreaking story. Uh, T11 incomplete uh, is actually what the injury is that I uh, sustained to my back. It's the T11 vertebrae. Uh, incomplete is the type of injury. So it's not, um, I, I have no movement from that vertebrae down, um, but there are still places where I might have a little bit of sensation. So that's the incomplete part. Um, Okay. The uh, the character was in a uh, car accident, which is what caused her injury, and her uh, girlfriend, her significant other, um, passed away in the car accident. So we uh, pick up with her kind of dealing with that loss, dealing with the injury, dealing with trying to get back on her, no pun intended, trying to get back on her feet, trying to get her life back together. And um, it's a very it's a heavy topic. It's a heavy movie, but um, it's one that I'm very proud of. Um, I actually worked with a woman for about three, four months prior to beginning filming who has that exact injury. And she taught me the ins and outs of what your day-to-day -day life is, things that you wouldn't even think about. Um, you know, you have bathroom schedules, you know, things like that, um, how you dress yourself, how when you're in the chair, what it's like, uh, how your legs fall, um, you know, you have to be strapped in or your, a leg could fall off. And if you don't know, it could be, if you're going along, it could be, you know, scraping on the ground and you could start to bleed and you wouldn't even know because you don't feel it. Um, things like how to pick up certain things. If I, if I had to lean over to, to get a glass across the table, um, depending on where it was, you know, I might have to brace myself because otherwise I'll just fall over. Right. Um, you don't really have that center of gravity anymore the same way you used to. So, just all kinds of intricate things. And um, it was really fascinating um, to hear her story, the woman that I, I worked with, to hear her story and how she obtained her injury and how she moved on from it. And she's now become a motivational speaker and, and does some really great things for, um, you know, the, the community of, of people who, you know, obtain these injuries and, and you know, have these life changing moments and uh, deal with depression and anxiety and all those types of things. So it's, it's a it's a heavier film, but um, it's one that I'm I'm very proud of, and um, you know everybody has stuff going on in their lives that everyone else may not even be aware that they're struggling with, and it it kind of showcases a little bit of that with all of the individuals in this film. And yeah, yeah. no, it looked real interesting. I, I checked out the trailer. Now they bring in a woman to take care of you uh, in the film. What was what was her name? Uh, Karen, Karen Silas, she's um, a phenomenal actress and um, she she made, we had some interesting scenes that we had to shoot together. And yeah, um, from the trailer, it looked like things get, maybe yeah. took a step overboard from the, uh, just the helping out there, but. Yeah, she, um, yeah, we end up falling in love. I end up falling in love with my caretaker um, and it it's difficult for both of us for various reasons, but, um, you know, she made, uh, the whole process really easy and, and it was lovely working with her and, um, you know, cause there was a lot of things I couldn't do. So it was kind of all put on her to, right. to carry those moments. Carry the load, so, so to speak, yeah. literally and physically, I guess there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so she was, she was great to work with. Okay, well, cool. Yeah, I've seen that. And then there was another one that I've seen that I wanted you to talk a little about, Marriage Killer. Tell me about that one, because I read the synopsis of that one. It looks like it might be on my weekend movie watch list. Tell me a little bit about Marriage Killer. You know, um, I got approached to do this film, and I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, this is one that's going to be one of those fun ones where, you, again, you get to play the bad girl, but she's pretending to be good, so it makes it even more yeah. interesting and um basically i uh interject myself if you will into a uh i want to become a thruple <laughs> basically I, I want to get involved with this couple this married couple and when um things start to turn away and they decide that you know it's run its course and you know i'm no longer wanted mm -hmm. uh I completely lose my mind and um, bad things start to happen. And it's, it's, it is a fun film. I, um, 
honestly, I hate watching myself. So I ha I've only seen bits and pieces of it, but um, all of my friends that have watched it said it's a fun ride. <laughs> There was a movie that I watched a while back and it was called, I never, I'd never seen it before, but it's called the zebra lounge. Have you ever heard of that? No, it's got a, there's like 40 of them, but one of the Baldwin brothers, not the one that's been in the, the news lately. I think it's Steven, Steven Baldwin, mm -hmm. Christy mm -hmm. Swanson. And oh, then wow. I'm not too sure of the other, the other two main characters. Um, they've been in a bunch of stuff, but like they basically go hunting for a swingers, party or swingers club mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they go find it they wind up meeting and met, they may even put out an ad but they yep. meet this couple they you know do their things with uh -huh. each other significant other and then that was kind of like it you know it got it out of their system but then they just the other couple just start showing up like at yeah. random times like yeah know, at their jobs at their house they even show up at like one of their kids birthday parties and it becomes like that fatal attraction situation where they don't mm -hmm. want to leave and then Yep. It, it was a really interesting movie and it was uh that's kind of what it the, the what it reminded me of when i was reading the synopsis of the marriage killer but i'm gonna definitely check that one out here this weekend and that one was called the zebra club you said zebra lounge zebra lounge Perfect. yeah zebra lounge oh, yeah you have to give that one a look there it had a, had a cool little twist to the ending too so yeah it's definitely awesome. okay um so i mean what are you looking for going forward? Like, are you still like, obviously T11 and complete was a totally step out of, you know, what you're, what you're normally casting. Is there any sort of roles or movies or, or series that you would like to get into going forward? Yeah, I, uh, I actually am in talks to do a, a couple of things. Um, one thing that I would absolutely love to do is a Western. I would love to do a Western. That would be, that would be top of my list. Um, and, uh, you know, other than that, I just, I love, I want to do an action film as well, but that, you know, that could be in the Western. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, you know, anything like that. I just love working. I just love, I just really enjoy my job and I really enjoy what I do. And, um, you know, it's been, uh, kind of hard for me with the, with the pandemic because I'm immunocompromised. I have lupus, so I've got to be super, super careful. So I've kind of taken a step back and just focused on my health. Um, yeah, I was going to talk to you about it. You're actually a spokesperson for lupus, right? I am for lupus LA. I'm an ambassador. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Amazing. When did you, when did you find out you had lupus? Uh, 2010 I was diagnosed. Wow. Um, yeah. Kind of came out of nowhere, but, um, and it took, a really long time to get the proper diagnosis but once i did um you know i was able to kind of get my life back and and um you know once you know what you're dealing with it's easier to, to manage yeah when you don't know it's a yeah. little bit harder yeah. your trial and error trying to figure some things out there but yeah it was a, you know. yeah it was a really really difficult time but um thankfully you know we got through it and uh i'm uh i'm doing well so yeah well, that's good. We went, and I do want to tell you on the show, happy past birthday. I think you just had a birthday a couple of weeks ago. I'm a I did. Virgo myself. So uh, Virgos yes. rule, obviously, if you're watching. They do. So, happy yeah. belated to you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah. we're going to close out here with just a few questions going forward. If you could pick hand pick any director to work with in a movie, who would it be? I honestly, I don't even know how to answer that. I mean, I have names in my head, but like, I just, I mean, who wouldn't want to work with, you know, Spielberg or Scorsese or, you know, I, I, there's, and there's so many good ones that are, are up and coming that I just, I don't. You want to know who could probably do something like really cool to fit your, your roles? Quentin. Oh yeah. I love him. Him and his twisted crazy amazing mind oh god it's, it's oh. i was talking with a friend of mine today at work about that and i was just like you know he he wrote true Rom i think this is the way it went he wrote true romance sold the script i think he had something to do with the the natural born killer screenplay but then he used the money he made off that to do reservoir dogs mm -hmm. and then the rest was history he got a budget with pulp fiction and i mean it was just off to the races and I, i'll be honest I wasn't like, and not that they're bad movies. It just, I wasn't like really into the kill bills. I watched them, but they weren't my favorites, but everything that he done, like since, I mean, it's just been 
awesome. Like Pulp Fiction is still one of my favorite movies today. Jackie Brown was awesome. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Even the more recent one, the uh, what was it? Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was real good. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Everything he does turns to gold. I, I mean, true romance though, that still is my one of my favorite, if not my favorite movie. I just absolutely adore that film. Yeah, as do I. Um, male actor, who would you want to work with? I should have these answers. Like I should have these just ready, like to just tee it on up. And I don't. Um, male actor that I would want to work with. Al Pacino. Oh, you couldn't have gave a better answer. Al Pacino. I mean, he's just perfect. Yeah, I mean, probably one <laughs> of the greatest actors. I mean, him and Robert De Niro have done countless. I'm a big gangster movie fan. I've interviewed a lot yeah. of real life gangsters, and obviously they are, you know, huge fans of them as well. But like, yeah, Al, it just don't get much better. And and how he some he'll go over the top in some of his mm-hmm. scenes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, nobody could pull that off and it be what it was but him. If anybody else done that, it would be uncomfortable. You know, it's like, wow, oh, absolutely. How the hell are they yelling like that? But when he does it, it's like, oh, that's, you know, that's Al. That's, that's how it's Absolutely. I mean, there, there's so many, but he's definitely, he's definitely right up there. Yeah. Uh, Scarface is like definitely one of my most mm-hmm. favorite movies. I love Heat, too. Yeah, where he played the mm-hmm. cop in the bank robbing movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, favorite female actor. Favorite female actor. Well, uh, excuse me. Who would you want to work with female actor? Meryl Streep. Fantastic in all aspects. I don't know if I've ever really seen a bad Meryl Streep movie. Kind of same thing with Al Pacino. I don't know if I've ever seen a bad Al Pacino yeah. movie. Even if the movie's bad, Al can, can help you make it through it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Her and Goldie Hawn still, yeah. I absolutely i feel like if i did a film with her i would never stop laughing yeah i feel like it would just be so much fun (laughs) so much fun well kristen i can't tell you how much i appreciate you coming on the show i've had a blast and i always like to ask actors this before we close out the show because it's you know the different types of films that you play the different types of you know roles that you take on what is like what you watch in your spare time like what's your go-to movie if you want to watch a movie or what's your go-to tv show if you want to watch a tv show so seriously true crime yeah i watch true crime all day long whether it's documentaries or whether it's you know movies based on true crime that's that's my go-to that's always my go-to yeah well we've got a a series we're coming out with on this show and it's uh, it would might be something you would like because it's real interesting. And when I tell people about it, they've never heard of it. But it's called Boys on the Tracks. And what it is, it was these two young kids. They were found dead on the tracks. And they said they passed out from smoking marijuana and they got hit by a train. Yes. And you know, like the, the tie-in, it was the, the corrupt police department with the mm-hmm. At that time, governor that would go on to be president later on, Bill Clinton, Mm -hmm. and the medical examiner was tied into it. If you've anybody seen the movie American Made with Tom Cruise, uh, he played a guy named Barry Seal. Barry Seal had a whole drug set up there in Mena, Arkansas. It was just like when you started looking at this on the surface, it's just like, Mm -hmm. okay, two kids get hit by a train. Mm -hmm. And, And this thing has so many damn branches that it goes to it's it's crazy and, and there wasn't there um a blanket that was found with them that nobody could figure out where it came from it was and a tarp. They, were, they wrapped them tarp. in a tarp and mm-hmm. yeah apparently nobody could find the tarp and then they were like at the press conference it was like we've done a thorough investigation everything was you know done by the book and it was like two days later they found the foot of one of the kids and I'm just like, how thorough of a job could you have done? You you left a whole foot. I mean when you get to the autopsy table, you kinda gotta say, all right, I think you're about eighty percent complete here. You're missing yeah. a foot. Missing a foot. Yeah. You know how this circles back to literally true crime is my go to. That story I first remember from Unsolved Mysteries way back yes. in the day. And I've watched a ton on it prepping for this thing we're going to do. We're going to do kind of like a four-part series. We're going to do that one first, then mm-hmm. tie in, do one with Barry Seal, 
then do the connections with the Clintons and all that stuff. And then the Iran Contra and kind of wrap it all up. But yeah, when I tell people about that case, it's, it's quite the, the tale because I mean, even the medical examiner himself, apparently, I guess he kept Bill Clinton's mom from getting into some trouble because she was an anesthesiologist and she accidentally overdosed somebody and killed him. So his testimony that it was an accident and not a, basically a malpractice type thing kept her probably from getting in trouble and maybe going to jail. So that's wow. why Bill kept him on as the medical examiner, which he didn't even have a license to be. And he was basically every time they was killing somebody, because every, anybody that come up and was saying, Oh, I know about this case. They would mysteriously wind up dead. And I'm t when I say mysteriously, it's like he would rule it as a suicide, but they got shot five times. Yeah, that's hard to do. Yeah, so it's like they're either like the worst shots ever in down there in Arkansas <laughs> or or something. But I feel one, like that's not an accurate statement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, God, damn, I'm going to get it in a minute. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but there was one case, and, and I'll say this and I'll let you get out of here, but it's just so crazy. This guy, he was found in his living room with no head. No head at all. And Fami Malik was the guy's name was the was the medical examiner's name and he said that he ruled the death death by uh the guy had an ulcer he died and the family dog ate his head the entire thing skull brain the whole nine yards hair everything and he said he knew this because he tested the dog's vomit and found brain matter in the vomit I didn't realize this at the time because I didn't get this info, but the guy that's doing this show with me, the dog was a chihuahua. Oh, my. But that's I not cannot. even the worst part was the head was found about a week later in a dumpster a couple miles from the house. So if that just don't give you just a hint, and this is just a medical examiner's part of it, just a hint into how crazy this story is, and I promise you it gets much crazier, much deeper, much more corrupt. But yeah, when I started going down this, I'm just like, dude, I'm, I'm going to need like, you know, a couple of beers and, you know, I'm going to have pages and pages of notes because it's, you, you can't keep up with all the, the craziness that went on with that. So when it comes out, I'll have to email you a link and so you can check it out because it's really, really crazy. Please do. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So yes, please keep me posted because I will definitely be tuning into that one for sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am Hollywood Wade. That was the ultra-talented Kristen Renton. And unfortunately, we are out of time. So tune in next week for an all-new episode of Crime and Entertainment. Kristen, we appreciate you stopping by the show. Thank you so much for having me. I had a blast. Thank you.